These are three honeymoon stories. Oftentimes, newlyweds take their honeymoons in foreign countries where the locals may not always speak their native tongue. In one of these stories, that exact scenario proved to be a problem as a matter of fact. Learning a second or third language can prove to be a very useful skill that will come in handy many times in your life, and the app Babbel has now made learning a new language easier and more fun. All you need is 10 to 15 minutes a day, and within three weeks, you'll be quickly picking up a new language. Unlike other language apps and websites that may teach you robotic phrases that not even natives may use, Babbel thrives on preparing you for conversational language that you will be able to use in the real world. Also, be sure to check out Babbel Live, where you can also take online classes in real time for a more personal approach. Right now, if you buy six months, Babbel is offering you an additional six months for free. Check the link in the description. For my wife and I's honeymoon, we went to Hawaii. Our hotel was on Maui, which we heard was the best island for couples and honeymoons. The hotel was on the beach, and every night they'd have torch shows, luau's, and other kinds of live entertainment. During the first few days, we did a lot of drinking and restaurant hopping. On our fourth day, we wanted to explore one of the jungle hiking trails, as there are a bunch on the island, and it was on our bucket list for the trip. We drove our rental car a long drive to the nearest parking lot to PPY Trail, a long scenic trail in the bamboo forest in the jungle. The trail would eventually lead to numerous waterfalls and hidden ponds that you could swim in. We were told about it by some locals and other tourists. So that's what we wanted to do. There were a few cars in the parking lot, but the parking lot wasn't just for this one trail. Walking down the path for a while, it truly was just a wall of bamboo on either side of us. It was truly an environment I'd never seen before. My wife stopped us and pointed at a small animal slightly off the trail. It was a mongoose. It was stopped, looking at us, and we both thought it was adorable. My wife started approaching it slowly, bent down to appear smaller and less intimidating. I did the same. Of course, the little creature ran away pretty swiftly, and my wife chased after it goofily. I followed suit. As we got deeper into the jungle, straying away from the trail, we heard the sound of water. It was a waterfall nearby. We followed the sound of it until we came to this beautiful pond with a small waterfall pouring into it. We dipped our feet in the water, and it was a surprisingly comfortable temperature, and it was deep enough to submerge ourselves in. So we decided to do a little skinny dipping, knowing how unlikely it would be that anyone else would be here. Well, apparently we were wrong about that, because as we were in the water, my wife shrieked and said, Oh my god, as she pointed at some older man in a straw hat with a long gray beard standing in the jungle, half behind a tree, staring at us. I'm too nice of a person. So I waved for some dumb reason, instead of yelling to stop creeping on us, because that's what it looked like he was doing. He didn't wave back, he didn't smile, he didn't even move. I looked at my wife and said we should leave, but she didn't want to step out of the water naked for him to see. I kind of agreed. So now I called out to him, asking if he needed something. And only then he called back in a surprisingly deep voice, saying he's looking for his dog. I said we haven't seen it, and then he walked away. I said to my wife we need to go immediately. We got out of the water and got dressed, then tried to find the trail, but we couldn't find it. We strayed far enough away from it that we were apparently lost. We had lost the direction we came from, and there was no cell reception out here. It was getting late in the day, and panic was setting in. By the time the sun was setting, my wife was in tears. All the while, as it got darker and darker, we felt as though we were being followed, hearing footsteps every now and then. It reached the point where the jungle was completely dark now and we had to use our flashlights on our dying phones. But when we heard footsteps coming from behind us again, I whispered to my wife to turn it off to not reveal ourselves. We felt like we were being followed for hours. After turning out the lights, it was pitch black for a second until my eyes started adjusting to the darkness. As soon as that happened, I noticed the figure about 10 feet away and it was slowly creeping closer backed away slowly as I pushed my wife behind me. I said, what do you want, in a very nervous voice. My wife apparently didn't see him, because she turned her phone's flashlight back on and aimed it at the figure, revealing it to be that old man with a straw hat and beard holding a hacksaw. We both screamed. My wife let out a scream of fear while I screamed go 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 to her. We ran through the jungle without any lights, there was just enough light to barely see where we were going. 
We ran and ran and ran, thankfully wearing sneakers and hiking attire. Eventually, I got cell reception, so we followed the map back to the parking lot we came from, which took a good 10 to 15 minutes of running. We made it back to the car, and at that point, it felt like we were given a new chance at life. The next day, we went straight to the Maui Police Department and reported the whole incident in an attempt to warn other tourists who may be visiting that specific trail. After that, we tried the best we could to continue our honeymoon, but it definitely put a damper on things. My honeymoon was in Sicily. Our hotels were in Palermo, Cefalu, and Messina in that order. While in Messina, we did most of the sightseeing at sites like Tormina. Messina was packed with beautiful old architecture and museums to explore, which is what my wife Patricia and I enjoy the most. Messina is a port-heavy city, and like the rest of Sicily, there are a lot of English-speaking tourists, but also a lot of Italian-speaking locals. We don't really speak any Italian beyond maybe an elementary level. We'd have a lot of locals approaching us trying to sell us things. At night, the vibe where we were was fun. Lots of music, people drinking and dancing and whatnot. We were partaking a little bit while also continuing to walk around and explore. The night got the better of us and we ended up getting pretty drunk and the time flew by. Pretty soon it was past midnight and things outside on the streets were simmering down. We took a wrong turn back to our hotel and kind of lost our way. Eventually, we ended up in this sketchy alleyway, and Patricia was getting upset that we seemed to be entering a sketchy area. I put my arm around her to make her feel safer. Suddenly, some guy came up to us obnoxiously close, speaking Italian like a machine gun, so quick we couldn't even attempt to understand any words. We couldn't tell if he was angry or concerned, but he seemed frantic. He kept saying this word, phantasma. At that moment, I didn't know what that word meant. I pushed the guy out of our faces and walked Patricia and I quickly out of the alleyway. He yelled more stuff at us in Italian, I didn't understand a single word of it. As we got away from him, I googled what the word phantasma meant, because it was the only word that he kept repeating that stood out. It means ghost, and when we found that out we looked at each other. I couldn't help but nervously laugh to try to get Patricia to laugh as well, simply because it sounded ridiculous. We were in this dark, sketchy area of the city for sure. There didn't seem to be anyone else around. We'd normally call an Uber, but it's not even a thing in Sicily, so we had to walk it. I have to admit, I was probably as uncomfortable as Patricia, as we'd heard certain parts of the city were unsafe at night. There was this quiet woman's crying sound coming from behind us all of a sudden. We both heard it, and we both looked back. There was this young but freakishly tall woman about 10 yards away from us, walking slowly in our direction. Her face was buried in her hands. Her height was actually unnaturally tall. She looked taller than me. In fact, it was so creepy that even Patricia, who was usually a sweet, nurturing person, whispered that we should get the hell away from her. We jogged down this narrow street and turned left to another alleyway. And we turned back again to the crying sounds. That woman was now at the end of this alleyway, just behind us, but still walking at the same slow speed, her face still buried in her hands. It felt like we were in this channel of alleyways and narrow one-way streets, and every time we'd turn, we'd still hear the crying behind us. It only stopped when we made it back to, I guess, what you'd call one of the main roads with other civilian traffic besides us. From there, we simply walked back to the hotel. Patricia kept insisting what we saw was a ghost, and every time she said it, it gave me chills. This story doesn't do it any justice in explaining just how disturbing seeing that tall, lanky woman walking towards us in that alleyway was. Not to mention that guys say the word ghost in Italian over and over. I'm not ruling it out as some kind of crazy over-the-top joke. For all I know, we ended up on some Italian YouTube prank channel. But Patricia insists on believing it was actually a ghost we saw, and it still gives me chills thinking about that possibility. We aren't the richest couple out there. We both work 9 to 5 jobs to make ends meet. We're doing all right now, but back when we got married, we were struggling. So when it came time for our honeymoon, we couldn't go all out and blast all our money. My wife, who I'll choose to keep nameless, was doing research for affordable beach getaways, and she found a private house in the Bahamas for three nights on Airbnb, so we went with that. 
After flight tickets and the cost for the rental, it didn't even come out to that much. Upon arrival, we entered the code for the padlock on the door to let ourselves into the home. It had a spacious living room and kitchen, a large bedroom, one bathroom, and a big back deck that led to the private beach. We spent all of the first day on the beach, then walked to a nearby restaurant for dinner. When we got back, this is where the weird things started happening. As soon as we walked in the door, we noticed things seemed like they were in the wrong places, like our sandals, our bags, and so on. Nothing was missing though, so we accused each other of having moved the stuff beforehand. We jumped in the hot tub that was on the back deck for a while until we both heard something from inside the house, like a bang or a door closing. I got out from the hot tub to check, dripping all over the floor of the house. All the doors were closed though, I didn't remember if they were open earlier or not. Regardless, I checked the room and it was clear of any intruders, as well as the bathroom. I went back outside to grab a towel and put my clothes on. I was done in the hot tub anyway, and so was my wife, though I was growing a little suspicious, or cautious you might say. The second day we sat on the beach for a while again, then went to some of the touristy areas of the Bahamas and did dinner. When we got back, again, we felt like things were different. Our stuff seemed to be in the same spots, but the bathroom and bedroom doors were open, and we didn't remember keeping them open. We knew it was possible we were being paranoid now and didn't actually remember how the doors were left, but still it was getting uncomfortable now. We made sure all the windows and doors were locked, and we skipped the hot tub that night. We just watched movies on the TV in the living room as there was a bunch of included streaming services on there. There was no upstairs to the house, yet we thought we could hear little taps and whatnot above our heads. Maybe the roof? Maybe an iguana or some similar creature? At this point we were even starting to think there might be some kind of Bahamian creepy crawly in the house. It seemed like a more logical explanation as to there being an intruder in this relatively small space. That night, I was in bed before my wife. She was in the shower when I heard her scream. I basically exploded out of bed to run into the bathroom. She turned the water off by then and told me that there was something in the vent above the shower. I got on the ledge of the tub and looked in it, but it was too dark in there. However, I did hear some tiny noises coming from in there. This almost confirmed that there was a rodent or some small creature in the vents of the house. Still, we had one more day, it wasn't our problem. We went to bed together. The next thing I remember was waking up to my wife shaking me. She had this horrified look on her face that immediately sent shivers down my spine. She told me to listen, and the silence of the room allowed me to hear it. This frantic whispering sound coming from the ceiling, particularly one of the ceiling vents. That was it. I grabbed my phone to call the owner of the Airbnb. I heard the ringing, but simultaneously I heard this vibrating sound from above us. Immediately I started to think, wait, is there an upstairs that the owner is living in? The vibrating above us stopped almost as quickly as it started, but the call was still ringing on my end. Curiously, I took my phone's flashlight and aimed it up through the vents, and for just a split second, I saw someone looking down through the vent into the room. Most notably, I saw their eyes. We packed all of our important stuff as quickly as we could. It took all of about 30 seconds and we were out the front door. We ran through the sandy dirt road until we came to a street, then we stopped to catch our breaths. We stayed in a cheap hotel that night and the next night as well. The last day we spent most of it waiting at the airport, but we reported this incident to Airbnb and we got all of our money back, and I'm pretty sure Airbnb banned the owner of that house's account. We didn't pursue anything further with legal action, as we were just happy to get our money back. Nothing of ours was missing, but who the hell knows what kind of shady shit he was doing there when we weren't in the house.